Hey, it's MK, and I am here with another Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches sketch for you guys today. And today's sketch is by Sandy Reversky. Um, this is series 16, and it is a, the double page series. So I'm just sharing with you guys that I picked out this little baggie that has a bunch of 49 and market elements in it, as well as a few chipboard pieces from uh, Dusty Attic. And then I've got these... I don't know, photo like postcard pieces that I was thinking about using also from Dusty Attic. More chipboard pieces, especially these portholes that I absolutely love, the larger one and the smaller one. I pulled out this submarine because I thought it would be kind of cool, especially on this specific layout about um, a, a schooner bar, but I don't end up using it. I have these beached um, rub-ons also from 49 and Market. It's from the Vintage Beached collection um, or artistry artistry vintage be something like that I'm not really sure you guys uh, and then I've got all of these photos a couple of them are uh, porthole views and whatnot it's a bunch of photos of this really super cool bar that we actually never got around to doing yeah so I have this page kit here that is from simple stories simple vintage coastal collection and it's just the base pages I don't actually have any of the elements to finish the page all, all I had were these base pages also from simple stories um, simple vintage coastal I have this um, blue and pink piece that is more like their cardstock but not as thick as cardstock and then from 49 and market the vintage artistry beached collection I have this gorgeous stripe I love this stripe you guys I have about three or four sheets of it and I've been using it with this specific um, wow uh, album theme what do you call that you guys um collection of photos yep my cruise layouts my album my cruise album <laughs> i totally forgot okay so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be taking my circle cutter now i love this circle cutter by creative memories you guys i use it way more than my circle dies i just find that it is very useful to pull out the blade and this cutter, especially on my glass mat, because I don't have to worry about pulling out a different mat or anything. Um, it is just a cut and go type of system. Um, I don't need plates. I don't need a machine. I just am able to quickly bring all of these elements and get what I want very, very fast and efficiently in my opinion. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting around these frames, these portholes for this specific picture. And I see that Sandy has asked in her double page, which I'm actually doing a double page for once, you guys. I, I finally got to do a double page um, within this series. And in all honesty, I see that she wants six photos, but I felt like if I left the portholes in their, in their rectangle format, it, it just wouldn't have the pop that I was looking for. Plus, I'm adding two more photos. Now, one of my photos will become the title, just like in the um, block that she has up at the top, because it was perfect. It's going to be this picture here where it actually says the schooner bar. Um, so it actually is perfect but I have this extra photo of me in front of one of the portholes which I know it basically says oh well that porthole is the same as the porthole you already have uh, but it's but it has me in it right so I, I just I didn't want to leave it out even though it's kind of the same kind of um, I don't think it's noticeable though in all honesty I don't think you can see that look, there's doubles of one porthole, um, in my opinion. So I'm going to take this blue cardstock and I'm going to go ahead. Well, it's not really cardstock. It's blueprint, but that reads as a solid. And I'm going to go ahead and use the whole thing to mat all of my photos. And I'm going to take all of the rectangles first, mat all of my rectangles, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the circle cutter to mat the circles. But of course, I'm definitely not going to have enough to do my four inch circle. See, as you can tell, I can only get two in there, but I'm going to have a solution of how I can get more. Now here, I'm just checking to make sure that um, the, you know, was the red blade actually going to cut around? Is it going to give me a big enough photo mat that I am looking for? So I wanted to make sure that I had the right blade. So I didn't, I had to go to the green one. And so now I'm checking to see if I can get a half 
of a circle from my leftovers and still two full circles. So that's how I'm going to solve my problem. Now my photos are cut slightly bigger than my, um, my template, my circle template is. So not a big deal. I am a-okay with that. Um, so I won't be getting exactly a half an inch, but I, or a half a circle, but I have, a, I have a solution for that as well. <laughs> so there is my portions, and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim out the size that I need from my leftovers, right? So simple solution, you guys, uh, cut and paste. And then when I distress my edges, which you know I'm gonna do, right? Everybody knows I'm gonna do that. So when I go and I distress my edges, then I will actually end up with um, a, a, a uniform look because nobody will see with the distressed edges and everything that it was all pieced together unless you look really really hard or look i see that it's that photo let's go look at her layout super close and see that it was that specific photo no you're not going to notice that so i'm going to go ahead and piece it all together now this is the only one that i show that i put together on camera i because everything else is just glue it together distress it she's done, right? But this one here, I really wanted to share with you guys how I glue it. When I get to all the different layers, I do end up using mostly my fingers because I don't want to accidentally um, scuff it up a bit too much to where I make it worse than what it was. See, and now you can't even tell which one I pieced together. Yay, I love that, you guys. I love um, making my paper stretch farther and I felt like I barely had any leftovers. Now, could I have used maybe the inner bits of my photo mats maybe if i wanted to stretch it like a lot but i'm okay with this you guys i really am um, i'm perfectly okay now my thought process because some of these were matchy matchy to what was in some of the portholes um, i thought i was going to bring in these postcard looking things because honestly if you look at it they they match kind of you've got the beach with the seagulls and all that stuff and then you've got um, another one where it looks like you're on the boat looking at the beach from the ocean side of it. Um, and so you got two different angles um, from, I, I think they're postcards, you guys. I'm not really sure exactly, but they scenery cards um, from the 49 and Market collection. But they were too big and they took up too much space for what I wanted. Like I really wanted this wood grain to show off um, I, in all honesty. And so I definitely wanted to make sure that um, that I still had that. So I brought all my photos down and I'm going to have the wood grain growing, wood grain going across almost as if it's that. Um, if you look at the top of Sandy's paper, she has the striped paper coming in um, maybe five and a half inches. She's got another striped paper on the right side coming in at five and a half inches. Then she's got that gap in the middle of you know her double page layout but then at the top she has layers of paper underneath the title piece and then she's got the stripe now i'm going to ignore the strip of paper or washi tape or ribbon or whatever that was supposed to represent i am going to ignore that because one i completely forget about it that's a good excuse and two i didn't bring my ribbon to this crop that i am at with the terrible gla glare on my, my glass mat i'm so sorry you guys um but yeah i i completely forget about it um in all honesty uh but i do love it so the pink is representing the big block that she has in between the two stripes and of course the stripe paper is representing the stripe um, there wasn't much i could do about the blue border all the way around this layout so i pretty much embraced it with the photo mats and that's how I ended up with the blue border photo mats as well and I feel like now it's all cohesive and, and goes together. On the other side, I debated about using an X-Acto knife and cutting out my wood grain border so that way I could put the stripes behind it and instead I decided to just cut out the part of the stripes that I wanted if that makes any sense now it's not exactly five and a half inches I didn't want it to be that big um, if I'm being honest I, I just wanted a I wanted a asymmetric uh, nope that's not the right word asymmetric is when they're they match perfectly but I didn't want it to be symmetric um, maybe it is asymmetric is is not symmetric haha <laughs> anyways I 
Sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about, and that definitely shows in what I end up saying. <laughs> so um, I did not want them to be five and a half on one side and five and a half on the other. So I went with five and a half on one side and three and a half on the other. The five and a half was absolutely perfect to where it butted up next to my wood grain um, printed paper. But then on the other side, I actually had three and a half inches at the top and at the bottom and only an eighth of an inch, which was barely an eighth of an inch on the right side so I could get rid of that blue because it definitely looked kind of weird on um, if I just would have left it like it. So I do end up doing that. So here I'm doing the exact same thing I did, I want to say yesterday. Um, I brought in some rusty hinge and salvaged patina just to give my porthole that uh, coppery, been in the ocean water for a bit kind of look so now I'm oxidizing type of thing um, I didn't bring in frayed burlap because I felt like that was going to make it a little bit too dark so I did not bring that in for my porthole I wanted it to be a little bit more of a yellowy gold look because um, I don't think gold oxidizes if I'm being on if I'm being if I if I get it um, I think I know copper does for sure but I think that's why that's why they used gold is because it does not oxidize but Mine does because that's, you know, it's me. I'm special. All right. So then I'm taking the frayed burlap and I'm bringing it in for my ship's wheel, but I didn't want the ship's wheel to be like super deep and dark. Um, so I'm going to bring in some scattered straw and just tap, tap a little bit of it here and there around my ship's wheel to give it that weathered, worn look like it's been out in the sun a lot and it's faded. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap it here and there and everywhere. It does end up becoming a little too light because um, I tapped just a little bit too much. So I do end up bringing in the frayed burlap um, a little bit more but not on camera uh, because it wasn't even enough. So then I felt like my portholes were getting to the part where they were distracting in the middle because I could see everything in the middle so I brought in this scrap it's a it's a lighter wood grain scrap from Heidi Swap I believe it's from her set sale collection um, but I used it on a layout oh I don't know a couple months ago yeah April March somewhere in there um, used it on a layout and I just had a couple scraps left over and they were the perfect color um, and not too distracting of a wood grain to take away from the wood grain I really wanted to show off right so um, went ahead and just filled those in just so that way I did not end up with um, a bunch of distractions within my porthole I am going to add some seagulls because I think it looks pretty cool I can you know, as soon as you walk into the bar, it's almost like you can hear the seagulls, uh, in all honesty. Um, so I went ahead and added those. Here's where I am piecing together my striped paper. And I have to tell you guys that um, when I cut this eighth inch little border off, uh, for one, it's cut too short. But for two, I cut the wrong side. Yeah, I, I didn't notice that until after when I needed to fill this little gap right here. I know I'm I'm special you guys um, so that's when I realized that my paper is not matching up and I don't know how I did that so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off a sliver and put it right in there because that is very distracting having that that bright pink color um, popping out of there so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that gap and it's not even gonna be noticeable once I start putting all my layouts um, or all my photos on there and get the layout uh, set up the way that I want it. Nobody's gonna know that I put all this, I had a pieced together this whole side. But I do like, one, the different shapes of photos. I absolutely like having all of these circles going across as opposed to just four by six photos going straight across. Although that is my go-to design, I love having four by six photos, either making it a whole panel going um, all the way from top to bottom of the page on one side, or like Sandy has it, all the photos in the middle. I, it, they are my favorite. But for this one, I felt like it needed a little something, something. And so cutting out the portholes and um, letting them, you know, basically make the layout for me, uh, will it worked really well. So like I said, this bar was super cool. And the only time that we actually saw this bar was when we were in the rising tide and we were floating up and then floating back down. So this was, I want to say, on deck six. 
and there wasn't a whole lot on deck six. So deck five was the promenade deck, right? Where everything was happening. Everybody knew everything. You had Starbucks on that deck. The car was on this deck. Um, service center was on this deck. Um, everything was on this deck. Now you had to go up to deck six to take care of your photos, but that was on the other side of where this bar was. And so the rising tide goes up to deck eight, which I don't know what was in between deck seven. I don't remember what was anyways, but you go up and that's when you see this bar and then you go back down and Sandy just made a mention going, oh my gosh, I really need to get in there and go take photos of that bar. Um, and then of course, realization hit and we realized we're never going to make it. So I made it at a point on one of my early morning walks because that is just me. I love take getting up before the rest of the boat. And I mean, literally, there's only like five of us Fruit Loops walking around the whole boat um, and taking pictures while the bars are empty or the slides are empty, especially the boardwalk. I enjoyed being in the boardwalk while it was empty and not full of um, not full of people and playing games and whatnot. I never did find the arcade again. Um, I know we went into the arcade once, but I never found that again. Uh, I, I don't know. Was that part of the boardwalk or was there a specific arcade? Huh. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know those answers. So I went ahead and I took um, one of the, <laughs> let's just get back to the layout. Um, so I went ahead and I took one of those nets and I cut it in half so I could use it and make it look like it went behind all of my photos and stretched all the way across just to fill in some gaps, but it wasn't so full that again, it took away from the layout, added a few things up at the top of the net, a few things down below to make it look like things were kind of stuck in there. And I really do love how this turned out. I love this uh, sailboat that matches the sailboats on the other side and the way that it that it rubbed onto because it was a it was one of those rub ons but the way that it rubbed onto this um, striped paper it just looks like it was pre-printed on there so I really do just love how that whole cluster looks and the design of the paper blending in with that rub on was just absolutely perfect all right you guys so that is my layout for today Sandy this was a really fun sketch I really loved um, adapting my photo to become the title. I really loved, um, you know, especially manipulating this pre-printed background and making it work for me. I, I really did love that. All right, you guys. So if you're interested in checking out more of Sandy's layout being recreated, go check out the playlist down below. And also too, don't forget to check out the Facebook group link uh, for Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. I have the link down below if you're not part of the Facebook group link. But if you are part of the Facebook group link, I actually have the photo album or the um, Facebook album for series 16. If you want to just go straight to there, then you just click on the sketch that um, Sandy created today and go into the comments and see everybody's creation underneath um, Sandy's sketch in the comments. All right, you guys, again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I truly appreciate it, and I will check y'all later. Bye. Bye.